Hey everybody, welcome back to the Once and Future Nerd. Got a new episode for you today, as we've had on the last Sunday of every month for the last year and change, remarkably. But before that, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that there is no universe in which we could make that happen without the ongoing support of our patrons over at Patreon. So if you like this show, and you like a consistent release schedule, and you have a few bucks you can afford to throw our way, please head over to patreon.com slash onceinfuturenerd and check out some of the rewards you can get by becoming a patron. You can hear episodes without commercial announcements like this one. Uh, you can read full chapter scripts at the start of each chapter, download full chapter audio at the end of each chapter, there's exclusive artwork and stickers and posters, and you can get a shout-out by name at the start of an episode. Uh, this month, I want to give exactly that kind of shout-out to Nick L. and Matt S. Thank you both for your support. Okay, that is all I've got today. I will talk to you again on March 26th for our next episode. Uh, and in the meantime, enjoy this one. The Once and Future Nerd, Book Two, Myth Made Flesh. Chapter Nine, A Handful of Bodyguards, Part Two by Gregory M. Schultz and Christian T. Kelly Madeira. I got enough to start us on a plan. If you'll recall, the exiled queen at her court had just learned a far lot about their new surroundings. Some of it through clever deduction and the rest through some very direct, albeit unpleasant, channels. We learned there's two gangs in this town, yeah? The Rosebuds and the Mulberries, if I recall. They're always at each other's throats and this town's barely holding it together. Which makes me think they're the only two gangs in town. Because if there were more, there'd, prob there'd probably be more peace. Right. I'm sorry, you're suggesting more gangs would keep the peace? Aye, in a wretched sort of way. They would all have their own wee fiefdoms, but none would be strong enough to rule alone. You'd see skirmishes on the borders now and then, but none would try in earnest to destroy the others, because an endless stalemate is safer. Hmm. It's not terribly different from the great houses of Jordan. Finally, he starts to get it. Anyway, I think these two gangs put a big old crack right down the middle of town. If we play it smart, we can wedge ourselves in there. Where? In the, the big old crack? Yeah, I heard it while I was saying it. But we gotta think fast before that shithead Bill gets back. Mm, I don't know, Lulu. I did embarrass him in town. For the last time, Janie, that's nothing to do with you. He was sore about how the brawl turned out, and you were the closest thing he could take it out on. Maybe. You know it won't get any better, don't you? All right, you rats. Come on out so we can give you a piece of our mind. Vanderberg's men shared a look, then calmly made their way towards the door. Figures you mulberry curs would want to ruin the only bar in town. Does Cliff know you're out here stirring up shit at Lulu's? Not sure he'd approve. The rest of the bar room's inhabitants gathered near the windows facing the street where they saw a crowd of nearly three dozen men, all with crossbows, some with torches, some with pitchforks. I'm stirring up shit. Y'all stood by while I got shot at with Lulu's bow, and you can bet your ass Mr. Weston would want me to stop y'all taking over Lulu's. Sorry you can't see so well. I always forget the brown in your eyes actual shit. <laughs> we were just having a drink. You were just looking for an excuse to start something on account of some filthy problem. If you weren't scheming to take over Lulu's, then why you got an elf in there? <laughs> Taking a quick read on the crowd that seemed suddenly riled by his presence, Yiluin attempted to hide beneath a table, but at an average height for an adolescent elf, he was a good foot too tall to fit comfortably. That's right, you worms. We know you're scheming up something with the elves. Don't think we didn't know Vanderberg traveled out east. 
From what we hear, he seems to be in high spirits. Got anything to do with what y'all have been chatting about with that elf and his posse? As clever as you think you are, you really are just a fool. A crowd of people came down the street, Vanderberg at their head. Neither organization has claimed Lulu's Ale House, nor do we intend to change that. Then explain why I nearly got my head skewered by Lulu's crossbow, and three of your men were ready to back up the one who took the shot. I don't know for sure, but it's likely you were being as much of a horse's ass as you usually are, Bill. <laughs> that about the way of it, Lulu? Just about. Everybody could see it was an accident. It were Janie pulled the lever after Bill startled her. At this, Vanderberg's head snapped towards the alehouse in surprise. Bill, taking this momentary distraction as an opportunity, reached for his crossbow. In a blur, Vanderberg drew his crossbow and shot Bill in his shooting shoulder, all before the man could level his own crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> you always had funny ideas, Bill. But thinking you could draw on me has got to be your funniest yet. This isn't over. I demand a duel. At this outburst, the amassed crowd grew still, awaiting the response, anticipating more violence. There you go, one-upping yourself all over again. But if you insist, then I agree. Not to worry. I'll make it quick as I can so you won't have to worry about your sorry life much further. Then you accept? I do. Then I name Weston as my proxy. And I accept. A man detached himself from the shadow of an awning across the street from Lulu's and stepped into the torchlight, smiling at Vanderberg. The crowd, having grown to include those noticing the commotion and wanting to know what was going on, grew uneasy as these two imposing figures now stared at each other. I would imagine that's the leader of the second gang. Given that crossbows appear to be the weapon of choice, speed appears to be the key to a successful duel. And we know Vanderberg's fast, and this other guy seems more than happy to duel him, so he must be pretty fast himself. Is that going to be a problem for us? No. If anything, I think I hear opportunity knocking. Someone tell me when I can come out, please. My feet are very badly asleep. Well, been a while, Weston. If I didn't know better, I'd say you were ducking me. We both agreed to leave the town split. Seem no point in breaking that deal. Yet here we stand. That we do. Suppose you put this together. Hmm. Heard maybe you were getting a little too settled. Like maybe you needed a reminder why the town split. I'm still here, Les. And still will be after you finish another one of your schemes. Like the scheme you had about having one of your lieutenants sleeping with the only person in the town with a mind for sums? Doesn't sound too far off from your scheme to head out east to make a deal with the fucking white forest before the next elf visit. Guess we'll see if you're still around to make good on that deal when they get here in two days. Vanderbug's eyes widened in surprise. Oh, interesting. You really didn't know they were coming so soon, did you? <laughs> Maybe you're up to something else, but I know you've got a plan. Let's cut the act and finally have it out. One last duel. One only one of us walks away from. Or... Regan emerged from the saloon. You both end up killing each other, and some loose catapult like Bill ends up in charge fucks the whole thing. I've got information on something very, very valuable. You can either split the value for both your gangs, or one of you will take the other out and become the only boss in town. Hey, that wasn't the deal. Deal's still on, just the conditions have changed. You're no stranger to that, right, Vanderberg? I kept my hand. You still- Doesn't matter. Here's what's gonna happen. You two, and only you two, are gonna go with my squire to make the pickup. You'll leave at dawn tomorrow. That way you'll have enough time to pick it up and get back here before the elves arrive. And why should I trust this isn't some ploy you're working with, Vandenberg? Because the best actor in Armstrong God couldn't fake that vein he's about to pop in his head. <laughs> I reckon you're right. But I ain't going anywhere till I know what we're picking up. The white fucking lady. Genuine article. <laughs> right. 
you lot managed to get across the mountains on the promise of... But as Weston glanced at Vanderberg, he saw no amusement, just determination to get what was owed, as well as the vein in his forehead growing to double the size. Well, shit. Suppose that's worth a trip. Fine. We'll both go. Right then. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, Lulu's is still neutral ground, but if you start trouble, you'll have to answer to me or one of my knights. At this, Brennan and Yellowin stepped out of the bar and took positions behind Regan. Also, if any fighting between your two gangs happens while their dads are out of town, we'll get word to the drop and the deal is off. Oh, and Vandenberg, lose the babysitters, yeah? Me and my crew have got every reason to stick around now. The gangsters into whose care Vandenberg had entrusted our party looked to their superior for guidance. After a brief deliberation, he tersely cocked his head in the opposite direction from the inn, and his underlings stepped away. All right. Y'all should run on home and get plenty of sleep. Some of you need to be up bright and early. The crowd began dispersing, confused by the lacklustre and sudden conclusion of the night's events. Weston and Vanderberg lingered a short while longer than most, eyeing each other, before they both turned away and made their way back to their respective sides of town. Regan, Brennan and Yellowin re-entered the barroom. That seemed to go well, your grace. Yes, a well-baited trap, if I may say. I'm not counting on anything just yet, but it's a start. Billy, I just put your ass down as collateral. You sure you're up for what we talked about? Don't worry, I got this. Besides, our crew doesn't have a bigger pain in the ass than me. And speaking of... Fuck, 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 out of my way! Fuck, 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 fuck. As the High Queen of the Human Realms of Jordan rushed off to the latrine once more, a man sat alone in the cellar, crouched amongst casks of ale and whiskey. That you, Lulu? Uh, my name's Nelson. Lulu gave me your food to bring to you. You can leave it at the bottom of the stairs. Hey, man. Are, are you okay? Am I okay? You know, this place seems kind of... Uh, Hostile. Cautiously, the large man stepped out from his hiding spot and got a good look at the rather diminutive figure standing at the base of the cellar stairs with a tray of bread and beans. I know how to handle myself. Yeah. Still, though, you know? What's your name? Look, I don't know what your angle is, but I prefer to be left alone. There's no angle. Just, as my dad would say, your family. Feel me? If you're one of those who thinks just because I do Carl show for money that maybe I'll do anything for money, let me tell you right now. Oh, no, 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 no. Gross, dude. I mean, not gross in like a homophobic way, gross in like a fetishizing way, in a I'm 16 way. That's not, yeah, no. Tell me why you're still here or else please leave me alone. Because my friends need your help even if they don't know it yet. Because I know what it's like to be the only speck of pepper in a sea of salt. That's, uh... Where I come from, my skin color is the one everyone seems to be having a problem with. This is paint. Washes off. Right. But does it, though? Where do you come from? Really far away, dude. There's this, uh, huge empire called the USA. It enslaved my ancestors up until my grandparents' grandparents. <laughs> Nowadays, they keep telling us to get over it, but honestly, I think they're the ones not over it. They got elves in, you say? <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's a really good question. We've got something close enough. What's your name? Folks around here call me Henry. Is that what you call yourself? No, but people around here can pronounce it. So it's easier. Well, tell me your name then. Give me a shot. On Ritzel. That's dope. It's on Ritzel, you said. Not quite. But I do appreciate the effort. I'll keep trying. Are your friends like you? Eh, not exactly. Uh, two of them are from where I'm from, but uh, none of them have my same ancestors. But they're really trying to be on the right side of things. Even the elf? Yeah, actually. He didn't used to be, but he shot another elf over it, the general. No oh, shit. How come? The leader of our crew, the short one with the knives, she uh, saw something. 
murders. A lot of murders, actually. I bet I can guess who it was who got murdered. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you can. I'm sorry. But it changed her. It changed a lot of them, honestly. And now they all want to get back at the elves. Why do you think they need my help? Because you for sure notice things about this town that those nice white ladies upstairs haven't. Can you tell me what they're planning? It's probably easier if you come upstairs and hear it yourself. The last step of the plan gets over on the rangers and the white forest. <laughs> okay, you got me. I've got to hear this at least. So, are you all just shitting yourselves constantly? No. Admittedly, the Queen wasn't starting her planning with the most pressing of details. I think you might have, like, a food sensitivity or something. Or maybe you're not eating enough fiber. Why do you even have this stuff? What lunatic decided to eat it? Hey, y'all. You know Zan? Of course. He returned their greetings with a very polite but not excessively friendly nod. I think he should help us with our plan. I think you're probably right. That's good thinking, Nelson. Zan, was it? On. On. How's it hanging? I'm Regan. I own a Regan. The, uh... The fucking... The champion of the civilized peoples and high queen of the human realms of Jordan. That's it. Civilized, hmm? And I haven't properly introduced myself to any y'all. Janie. Howdy. Nice to meet you, Janie. Ma'am? You put on a good show in the square before. I almost had fun for ten minutes watching Bill get embarrassed like that. Just doing what I'm paid for. Regan, was it? That was... Well, you got a lot of guts. I can't thank you enough for stopping them from coming in here. Can I put your next drink on my tab? I'd like that. But I gotta ask for something more important. I need to know all I can about this town. Oh yeah? Why's that? So I can get rich. <laughs> guts indeed. But that'll only get you so far around here. So why don't you tell me what else I'm missing? Come on, I'll introduce you to my crew. I love this. Uh, what do you call this? My cloak. May I? Oh, you can't find craftsmanship like this out here. Right. So this is my crew. Look, as you may have realized by now, this story has quite a few heroes, and you already know their names, so I'll spare you the ritual of saying them all aloud. Suffice it to say, once introductions were made, planning began in earnest. Okay, so everyone here is either a mulberry or a rosebud. Except for me. And me. And me. And Carl. Now I think of it. Can I get anyone anything else to- Another ranch of stew. I'll open a tab. Suit yourself. I reckon there's a fair number of folks who aren't one or the other, but all the rangers are anyway. Which is to say, everyone who takes money to kill. So that's the racket. And who do they take money from? Anyone who needs to hire an army. Usually elves. Why would an elf need crossbows for hire? What about the Knights of the Wood? As it sounds like you know too well, it's quite a trip from the White Forest, and it turns out that the Tarlow Hill ain't at the beck and call of every Midland elf that gets a farming charter. Interesting. So the buds and the blossoms fight over the contracts, but never too hard. They're gonna make this shithole seem orderly and dependable. Else, they're worried their masters will take their coin elsewhere. And word is, there's a real fancy pants elf coming through in a couple days' time with a big, juicy contract. One would have had to know Regan well and be watching her closely to notice her muscles tense in this moment. But tense they did. What do we know about this elf? Suppose, just for example, that a friend of yours was... Whatever the opposite of welcome is in the White Forest. I think the opposite of welcome in the White Forest is orc. But go on about your... friend. Would you tell that friend to lay low while this elf was in town? If that's what your friend's worried about, then they're in luck. Oh yeah? This particular elf has made kind of a name for himself telling anyone who'll listen that the White Forest is too big for its britches. Yeah, written a few things with ruffled feathers. The phrase tiptoeing up to the line of treason was thrown around. We might just need to meet with this guy. Yeah, well, you have to do that meeting on your own. Him coming is why Weston and Vanderberg are so on edge and so keen to get their hands on that statue of yours. And it's also probably the only reason those two scuffles stop before they burn half of Main Street. Right. 
Now, Vandenberg and Weston. Suppose, just for a second, they were out of the picture. What's that do to the situation? A look of genuine apprehension passed between the Queen's newfound local contacts. You got guts, but please don't be stupid. As much as I'd like to see them both dead, they're fast. Really fast. Thousand young bowslingers each have tried to challenge them. And not one in those two thousand is going to get to grow old. But what if we got them out of the picture without fighting them? How are you fixing to do that? Let's just say the drop-off they're going to tomorrow is going to keep them away longer than they're expecting. What's that by us? They cast long shadows, those two. It wouldn't be enough to get them out of the way. You'd have to turn all their men against them, which is going to be no small feat. But suppose you manage to do that. Then what? Well, I reckon one of two things. Either another leader presents himself, and the town rallies around him, or else no one does, and the town burns to the ground. Elves be damned. There's no one in either gang right now who can match Vanderberg or Weston. And I really can't afford to have this town burned down, so if y'all are really fixing to get rid of those two, you'd better find a fitting replacement and face. What if I was the replacement? <laughs> no offense, dear. They'll never trust an outsider. What about an outsider with more money than this town's ever seen? You were never gonna give Vanderberg or Weston that statue, were you? You're gonna fence it yourself while they're gone. <laughs> Guts and brains. Would that work? It might. If there's one thing rangers worship more than their bosses, it's silver. So we need to figure out how to turn the rangers against their bosses. I'll put on a pot of coffee. <laughs> The Once and Future Nerd is directed by Christian T. Kelly Madeira. It is created and executive produced by Zach Glass and Christian T. Kelly Madeira, and co-executive produced by Jess Kelly Madeira. Associate producers are Susan Degnan and Alex Story. It is performed by... Rhiannon Angel. Garrett Arman. Dan Dobransky. Anya Gibeon. Ian Harkins. Aaron Lanham. Paul Notis. Anna O'Daniel. April Ortiz. Frank Quares. Julie Reed. Regina Renee Russell. Gregory M. Schultz. David Sylvester Wolf. Editing by Jim Banting. Foley, sound design and post-production mixing by Edward Bush. Tom Lee is our musical director and lead composer, with additional scoring by Chris Montalbo. For more, visit onceandfuturenerd.com or find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr or Reddit. If you're enjoying the Once in Future Nerd, you might enjoy this show from our friends. Oh, hello. I didn't hear you there. Welcome to Taking Initiative, an actual play podcast with an audio drama feel. Josh, I hear you ask, there's many actual plays out there. What can I expect from yours? That's a good question, imaginary question asker used for this bit. What can you expect? Six years of experience, three seasons of content, Bi-weekly releases, D&D, Pathfinder, Tears, Laughter, Tears from Laughter, Guests, New Players, Experienced Players, Spooky Tales, Epic Tales, Silly Tales, Characters with Tales. But Josh, I hear you ask again quieter. Can I get a sample? Who am I to say no? Here, thank me later. Skibbity bop! Oh. Who is that very famous gay painter, Tom Selleck? What? No, <laughs> not Tom Selleck. Give up, pop. I have a kink. Kraken is a considerate lover. Bet you guys are real proud of yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Taking initiative. Take initiative now.